Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is January 30th, 2022. Happy Chinese New Year, Howard. Have you had hey, how's it going? What do you think of my year? what do you think of my Walgreens? I'm trying to look at my charts clearer. Uh -huh. I've succumbed to like old man glasses. Yeah, I think they're looking amazing, Howard. Like almost like the I don't care like how the I look. Oculus. Like the I'm, Oculus. <laughs> I'm quite content with my life. I don't care how I look. Send your hate mail. Uh, I can see these are like two times magnifiers. Yeah, definitely. I can see I can see a zit on your face before you see it. Possible. You look a lot smarter. So let's do it. All right, let, let's do it. Let me share my screen. Tell me good news. Is there any good news? How broke am I? Uh, the good news is that uh, the market candle again. The market stopped selling off on, on Friday. I mean, at least Apple managed to uh, <clears throat> have a tiny rally after strong. Yeah, I think Tesla had pretty good news too. I mean, Tesla's down, but like it was a really profitable quarter as well. Look, like, no one is arguing that there have been some good news on the earnings front last week, but the reality is that the market reaction to them has been really uh, abysmal like yeah in most of the cases the market uh, sold off good earnings um, which typically uh, happens during corrections during bear markets yeah. uh, and it seems like sentiment kind of changed on friday after you know a quick sell-off in the morning and yeah. uh, the companies that reported either friday morning or, or thursday uh, evening like apple and visa they they kind of benefited from that so they had strong uh, strong days i mean the, if you look at the charts on friday like they basically look like twins they're like eight thousand twins they all look intraday the same uh correlations are yeah there was a lot of index there was a lot of index buying. it wasn't it wasn't helping the unindex stocks the unindex stuff was getting hammered yeah in, intraday i mean everything's looking the same like correlations are super high it almost doesn't matter what you own yeah uh, i mean this is all index futures buying and we'll see if there's real buying We'll start seeing some of these growth names. They're not in the index. Like if you, every IPO is completely broken. Like so, there's two markets. No one wants to own the IPO stocks. It's like there's no, that's no bounce. Um, so, so you basically have it's an index world right now. And this is the first real. This is really a tough market if you're not indexed. And you know it's that's that's what you look at right there the ipos they have no index to help them they've got nothing but sellers and it proves that everything's overpriced people just can't get out of these things fast enough they don't see again this is what creates opportunity people don't see other opportunities so they're pull, they're selling their ipo stocks whatever shares they got and indexing so you're swapping it out for the qqq which can bounce for the spy I mean, you know. both of them are down here today, uh, pretty substantially. But yes, they're holding a lot better com compared to the arc and, yeah. and, and the light. I think I think the venture capitalists and the bankers got a real taste of what an, of of what indexes mean, right? It doesn't, you know, if you if you're not in the index, there's no buyers. Yeah. So this is a chart of the of the Nasdaq 100, a weekly chart. And as mm -hmm. you can see, at least we finished near the kind of the highs of the week. So we yeah. had a we had a seven percent range for the week. Seven percent finished flat. So a lot of volatility, a lot of high correlations. Yeah. Um, that's what's currently going on. We'll in the see market. if it we'll see if it carries over. A lot of people, there a lot of stocks look like they have some short term bottoms. Even some of the the yeah. terrible IPO stocks. But we'll see. Uh, I'm not convinced. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, I think the bullish scenario here is we kind of follow through next week uh, based on strong reports, maybe from Google, some other, maybe some of the cheap stocks, Qualcomm. I kind of think that if the S&P tests 450, like near its uh, declining 20 day, it'll find initial resistance. And, you know, we might see like a reverse. It could be at the open tomorrow for Christ's sake. I doubt it, but that's what I'm thinking. But yeah, you're right. Volatility has been super high. A lot of a lot of gaps, and most of them being faded. Yeah. And, and for the most part, you know, the the stocks that would gap down, you know, the, you know, they're gapping down significantly, and 
they're acting even weaker, like Caterpillar and a lot of other, a lot of others. Yeah. And the ones that are gapping up, that they're just getting sold, like they're getting faded. And as I said, mm-hmm. Apple, Visa were like some minor exceptions. Earnings season has basically just begun. Like most of the companies are still due to report. I think next week we have Facebook and Google are the two big one, PayPal, yeah. and, uh, Exxon, some of, some of the others. So currently, if you look at the like the stocks that are technically not broken, it's like 95% energy, oil and gas. And the interesting part is that, is that the US dollar is near 52 week highs. So I'm kind of thinking that wow. basically maybe the only thing that is keeping energy so strong is that situation between Russia and Ukraine, Russia mm. and Europe. Uh, mm. That's the only explanation because you know, with all the other commodities pulling back, it kind of doesn't really make sense energy to be here, but it is here. So you cannot argue with price. This is what's going to happen. I'm not going to argue with the price. I'm, I've been tempted to just, yeah, it just doesn't interest me. I'm just not sold. But I think the economy is still a cloud-based economy. You know, the COVID stuff, the COVID tailwind, for sure, flushed everything five years forward, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, um, not everything's Peloton, um, <clears throat> you know, DocuSign's not a terrible business. Uh, it's overvalued. Zoom is not a terrible business. These, these companies need to work. Um, it's all about valuations and all about perceptions of valuation and, uh, just sentiment. I mean, if the market is in a pessimistic mood, it doesn't matter how great a company is. If the market is willing to pay, you know, 10 P 10 P instead of, you know, 5,000. So you know, you just if you go back to the IPOs and the SPACs, if you go back and look, that's just okay. tremendous, tremendous supply for the last two years during that bull market. Then you have a whole other world of crypto, which was taking up supply in one giant money laundering uh, phenomenon. Um, you know, coin here, like I, I don't understand why you would buy Bitcoin at this point. Because the liquidity that Coinbase provides you is so much easier, uh, which is the closest proxy. You know, people are trading micro strategy. People are lunatics. Okay, so people are trading micro strategy. Uh, I mean, the guy may be smart, smartest man in the world, but you can you can own a levered play to crypto at Coinbase, right? Now, not that people should. The stock's broken, but. Um, you know, crypto. I don't understand why people need to be in crypto. They can buy Coinbase here. You know, uh, so it'll be. It, there's some really interesting, you know, headwinds. You've got the, you know the market trying to price in these rate cuts. You know, without growth, uh, the stock market becomes boring. People will be going back to work this spring for sure, and so there'll be less trading, less activity. And um, in the fintech world, you know, uh, Wealthfront got bought by UBS. I don't know if UBS is a public company for just a billion bucks. Yeah, one point um, something. What's, one point the, what's the market cap of UBS? 67. Wow, they did. So they paid a lot. Like they played over 1% of the company for a robo advisor. 2%, 2%, yeah. 2%. What's, I do math like American. One, two, you round up. The or round down. So, okay. uh, so UBS is that like at all time highs? Oh, uh, it's it's close. I mean, the financials. Could, I mean, not all time highs, but I guess more. Where's Deutsche years. Bank? Where's that shithole Deutsche Bank? <laughs> mm. Let's see the, the new sponsors of the show, Deutsche Bank. Stop yeah. going down. Okay. <laughs> so this is what will happen to growth stocks for real, though. Growth stocks with with great margins and earnings, and no, and the and the and the leverage of the cloud. I I, I honestly think that. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're 10, 15%, 20% away from a bottom in, in the cloud stock. So at some point, you just got to turn off your screen and, um, you know, in this 30 area. And I look at Hack, which is the securities ETF too. And I'm like, at some point, people, you, another 15%, you just turn off your screen for a couple of years and you buy some software and some cloud and some security and Hack, and a little QQQ, and you go back to work and uh, let the market start doing work for you. Because yeah, let's see how those, the market... What's that? Let's see how the market will react to the, their earnings report. Uh, so far, we have um, I mean, pretty decent reports from like uh, Team and 
which is a Asian Australian company. Uh, yeah, Jira. It was, it, yeah. Got up, it, it was sold off. Expensive company. It was sold off. 150 and then, times earnings, like. And then you have ServiceNow also gapped up, sold off. I mean, obviously on Friday, everything bounced because of the high correlation. There's everything. such overhead resistance. I mean, I just think software is just a, just a tough space to be. Unless so if, really... you, if you have had to pick one software company for the next two years to own and to I act on weakness. Said, I think it's, you know, a combination of Google. I mean, obviously I'm looking at like hack for people that want to own cybersecurity. Okay. Um, so that's an idea. I do think Google is still pretty untouchable. I think at some point here, where is it pull? What's the pullback? Thirty percent. So <clears> let's see the hack. current <clears throat> IGV, which is the software ETF. Again, like I'm buying. I'm looking for opportunities now and some in in software. You're not going to get one in Google. IGV mm -hmm. down down twenty four currently uh, from its fifty two week highs. Yeah. So, you know, in the, in the down 35, 40% on these indexes, you got to be prepared to just forget about it. The VIX, you know, touch was in the 30s, which, and so in tech, it was probably in the 50s. <clears throat> so you've got fear elevated, but you know what? The stock market is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is just in a really tough spot. You know, small caps just have no bid. And there's yeah. really a lot of product. There's a really a lot of companies that probably shouldn't be public in the last two years. So I think you just gotta digest a lot of this. But like, like you're seeing with Apple and, and Google, there's so much money flowing into the market still looking for growth. So the easiest way is for people to just do the indexes. So it's a, I think it's a really tough market. What are you doing? So I'm mostly doing intraday trading right now. Like, I mean, I don't mind to be short or, or long on an intraday basis, but that's the only thing that works, that's why I pointed out to you that last week the Nasdaq 100 had, had a seven percent range, and it finished and it finished the week basically unchanged. And in this type of market, the only way to make money act actively trading is intraday. Like I mean, the other approach is the extreme opposite of that. You know, when you have a super longer term view and then you slowly accumulate. On yeah, that's all I can do here is. Or, you know, or a business that you like. That, that's basically all you can do right now. There, there, there's a possibility you have to be prepared for, it, just like when oil went negative, you know, just because the cloud is a great term, especially in a bear market. People think that there's winners and losers in this business. And even though <clears throat> demand is insatiable, supply is also endless. And um, so you got to know what you own, and that's what this market is, is kind of teaching you. Yeah. There are companies that will bounce faster. You know, exactly. any conversation I have with the software investor, it's Snowflake, it's um, <clears throat> Shopify, it's um, Cloudflare, it's Zscaler, ZS, mm -hmm. which is in the security side, and CrowdStrike. These aren't cheap companies because the same smart investors talk about all of them as like, you know, category killers. So the question is, do you, you know, when they're down 25, 30%, is that cheap? No, that's I mean, the Most of part. them are down 50%, not 25. <laughs> 60, yeah, 40, 50%, yeah. Yeah. But after four or 500% runs, so. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like a thousand so, percent run, most of them get a thousand yeah. percent, yeah. And so, you know, there it's, you really got to use wide kind of, scales or for for most people indexing you know with the nasdaq down 20 percent, you have to pick some points where you say i'm going to add some exposure and just forget about it yeah i mean don't uh, have to buy everything in one day just you know slowly scale in uh, the, the one thing about the indices is that we know that they're going to come back because they rebalance every year they get rid of the losers and you know they buy some potential winners so uh, yeah. you, you might not get the 100 percent a year return but over time you know that they're, they're going to come back while you don't know that with individual stocks, you know. No, you don't. And and you had three great S and P Nasdaq years. The uh, so it's not like um, the market doesn't know us anything right here. But anyways, I, I think the economy is okay, right? The the Fed's doing what they said they were going to do. They're going to battle inflation. You know, um, personally, I'm not for a war in the Ukraine. Um, so. You know, that's a wild card. And um, 
the good news is there'll be no companies going public in this market. So supply, you know, the losers are going to get killed. And yeah. I think um, some of them are very few, but uh, there are some that are coming public and they're not doing well. Usually if you, if you go public in this environment, I mean, it means two things. You either need the money a lot or you're getting a really, really bad deal for, for the private owners. And that means potentially a great deal down the road for, for us, if, yeah. if we know those businesses. Like this one, another one that I know that it's a really profitable, decent growth business that, you know, this, for example, this one, FGI Industries, they make bath products, which is a, a pretty, you know, decent growth business. And they wanted to IPO between six and eight, and you know, it went down to three. So yeah. this is the time when you get some, you know, some interesting deals if you have like a really long-term horizon on those. Yeah. yeah. Well, I said, this is when you have to sometimes treat some of these stocks like venture capital because you're not going to get the index support, right? So the market's up 3% doesn't mean your stock's going to be up 3%. And, and so it's, 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 and most individuals don't have the power to do this type of deep research in a company. So it's, it's just one of those tough periods in the market. So, um, you know, the professionals have an edge and people that have the stomach for this and do it all the time. Yeah. Um, we talked about it, you know, last year was an outlier and the S&P 500 had an only 5% drawdown. This is, you know, something unheard of. And the normal drawdown any given year is like 15%. So we're just going back to what's normal this yeah. year. So. All right, my man, have a great week. All right, uh, one last thing. Who do you think is going to win uh, Super Bowl next? Sunday. I mean, I've been rooting for Cincinnati just because it's Cincinnati and no Have you ever cares. been there? Have you ever been to Cincinnati? Um, I don't think I have. Have you? I think I've been one on a, you know. Well, on a bender from St. Louis when you're oh, on the way, oh, Yeah, on the way to St. Louis, you know, I had to go. To <laughs> I want to visit the two worst cities in America. And, <laughs> and so we went back. Rams to used to be a team in St. Louis, by the way, when I lived there. So, and then they moved. Yeah. They've All been right. in 10 cities. The, uh, but I'm, I'm rooting for Cincinnati. It's cool. I mean, I'm not rooting for the Rams. It's just, what a great quarterback to go into Kansas. They've won like three games on the road. It's incredible. Good. And um, it's, just, it's just a great team. It's fun to watch. All right, buddy. Have a great week. All right. You too, Hart. <clears throat>